The state of Tennessee is about to pay some six-figure salaries to nine people to do something critics say is not only unnecessary but already being done. It is a brand new hand-picked oversight board to review the good time credit given to prison inmates who earn their sentence reductions according to a long-standing law. The idea is to keep the worst offenders locked up as long as possible. But critics say no one has thought long term and the cost could be untold millions. In partnership with the Nashville Banner, here's Demetria Kaladimos. This is the man who prompted a whole new layer of prison bureaucracy. Cleotha Henderson was sentenced to 24 years for kidnapping. He got out after 20, then allegedly kidnapped and killed a Memphis school teacher. Henderson misbehaved time and again behind bars, didn't take a single class. For that, he lost 180 days of so-called good time. But when he was let go, mathematically, he had done all the time the law required. Uh, that's what started it. We, we need to do something about this. And for the record, would you please uh, state your name? It's been more than a year since lawmakers began studying the system for calculating prison sentences in Tennessee. Sentencing credits are automatic. They just occur automatically. With an average 25,000 people behind bars every year, the Department of Correction relies on an automated management system they call TOMAS. It is programmed to look at certain things um, each month. Thomas adds and subtracts days according to someone's participation and behavior while incarcerated. If they misbehave, disciplinary boards at each institution hand down penalties. Who, who's making these, who makes the decisions to grant the good time credits? Some legislators seem surprised to learn that humans aren't making decisions on everyone's progress every month. It's all set out in the law. You don't have a person sitting there saying, well, he seems okay and he's not so good. We feel like we're going to give him this many credits or that many credits. It's all, you know, a very standardized. I mean, TDOC has regulations already in place that are followed um, that said that if, if you meet these criteria, you get these credits. The department is following the system as it's set out in statute. That is soon to change. The state is forming a new nine-person oversight board, hand-picked by the governor, lieutenant governor, and house speaker. Nine people, all paid $120,000 a year, not to replace the current prison disciplinary boards, but to essentially double-check their decisions. Um, Tennessee taxpayers are gonna pay a lot more money for yet another board of individuals doing work that's already being done by someone else. In reviewing the hours of testimony on this matter, there seem to be contradictions and inaccuracies. But my goodness, it's time to have some oversight over these boards that are each at each prison that are appointed by the warden that just kind of do whatever they want to do. Not exactly. Prison disciplinary boards do have guidelines to follow and they can and do remove sentence credits. And as for the new oversight board, it's still unclear how many cases they might be able to oversee. They take each inmate individually and they will um, say, yes, this person does deserve these credits that, that he's been awarded. But it doesn't say that they have to look at every single one. They have the discretion of as they go through, making sure they can handle the cases that they do see. I believe that this would be basically an impossible undertaking by the review board. Lawmakers heard from colleagues and legal experts who questioned the capacity of nine individuals to do this job. From my calculations, you know, if you spend just a minute um, each week on, um, or each month on each of these 28,000 inmates, you're talking about over 100 hours a week of work just to spend a minute looking at the paperwork, just a minute per inmate. I don't know how they're supposed to do that if they're really looking at these things. And so my concern is, is that they're gonna say, well, gosh, we haven't been able to approve these credits yet. We're gonna have to get them next month. And then that's gonna turn into months and months of backlog. Also, 
this board's been given a tremendous amount of administrative power to promulgate its own rules, hire staff as it sees fit. I mean, you're talking about real money here and real power. We've got about 28,000 inmates at any given time. If this works out to just one more day per inmate per month on average, that'd be about $26 million per year if that's just one extra day per month per inmate, $26 million. Despite questions about unintended costs, in the end, this bill passed. The same legislature that dissolved community oversight of police forces approved this new level of prison oversight with a last minute amendment that dropped the requirement for diversity. But I'm deeply concerned about why you think, or this body should think, that removing the diversity requirement for the board would be a good idea, particularly when it's more diverse people being incarcerated in the state of Tennessee. So far, three board members have been named. A criminology expert, a former DUI prosecutor in Memphis, and a conservative talk radio host from East Tennessee. I don't think conservative talk radio was one of those uh, criteria that would qualify someone for this board, so that certainly raises questions. Though no work has officially begun, all three are already drawing pay of $10,000 a month. Uh, and it's a full-time job. It's, it's a very, it will be a tough job for, for those that are going to do it. We have a roughly $55.6 billion budget, and while this is a roughly $1.4 million fiscal note in state expenditures, $1.8 million every year after that, it is a scintilla of a percentage of our state budget, um, but this bill will ensure that justice is done. The idea of good behavior credits may seem like something new, but Tennessee was actually one of the first states in the nation to adopt them back in 1835. We have yet to hear who the governor or the speaker of the House have nominated to complete this new oversight board.